redox reaction conducted in a beaker would generally occur so rapidly that the necessary electron transfers would occur practically instantly, and the two half reactions would immediately reach equilibrium. But suppose we physically separated our half reactions so that they couldn't chemically mix, but so that the necessary electron transfer could be made via a wire. Electrons would still flow from the oxidizing to reducing species, but in a controlled manner, such that the electrical energy of the electrons passing through the wire could be harnessed. This is known as a galvanic, or voltaic, cell. You can remember that they are the same because of the V in both names. Galvanic cells typically utilize metals for the oxidation and reduction half-reactions. For this example, let's look at solid plates of zinc and copper immersed in solutions of zinc sulfate and copper sulfate, respectively. Zinc, recall, has a very low reduction potential, meaning that its oxidation potential is very high. In other words, zinc will easily become oxidized to zinc 2 plus, and in so doing, it becomes water soluble and drifts off into the solution. The lost electrons flow the other way, up the wire and over to the copper plate. From there, they draw copper 2 plus ions, courtesy of the copper sulfate, out of solution, and combine with them to form solid copper on the face of the copper plate. In the first half cell, known as the anode, zinc is being oxidized to zinc 2 plus. And in the second half cell, the cathode, copper is reduced from copper 2 plus to solid copper. We use the mnemonic red cat nox to remember that reduction takes place at the cathode, while the anode hosts oxidation. Since reduction requires electrons from the oxidation reaction, electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode. The anode and cathode are commonly denoted with a minus and plus sign, respectively. Now, as the redox reaction occurs, electrons will continue to flow towards the cathode, and that induces a charge buildup. Piling up all that charge at the cathode is very energetically unfavorable, and will quickly halt the reaction. To combat this, we connect the two solutions with a salt bridge. The salt bridge contains a salt, positive and negative ions, which can independently migrate into the two half cells to preserve electrical neutrality in each half cell as the reaction runs. For instance, suppose our salt bridge contains potassium chloride. As electrons flow toward the cathode, the positive potassium would also flow toward the cathode to balance out the negative charge. The negative chlorine flows towards the anode to replenish some of its lost negativity. To measure this cell's cell potential, also known as electromotive force, the forcefulness with which electrons are propelled through the wire, we could introduce a voltmeter. We'll learn more about electrical currents and voltage in physics.